This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello, my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, it's all about the penguins. Uh, they're going to be going to the desert, all the way to the moon, to the jungles, to the city. Uh, we're talking about zany penguins here. Uh, this is for two to five players, takes 20 minutes or less to play. It is sort of a drafting set collection card game with some really interesting scoring mechanisms. Uh, this is designed by my favorite designer, Bruno Cathala, and Matteo Lanvin, uh, another designer, first time designer, I believe. Uh, so let's check it out. I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. Zeny Penguins is sort of a drafting game with set collection that you was played over eight rounds. This is how my tableau might look in front of me at the end of the game. I want to help you understand scoring because the rest of the game won't make sense until you understand what you're trying to do. So say this is the end of the game. You'll notice I have these lined up in different card colors. You could also think of them as suits. They're also different locations. So the black suit is on space. It's in the moon. The blue suit is in Antarctica. The yellow is in the desert. The green's in the jungle and the red is in the city. At the end of the game, you're going to look at each one of these five locations and you're going to look at all the players in the game and find out who has the highest total numbers in each zone. So for example, here's a seven and three. I have a 10 power in the city. If I have the most power at the end of the game, I'm still going to have a handful of cards. These are the cards that are going to help me score. So this is a 10. If I have the most, I can then score all of the red cards in my hand at the end of the game. So let's say I had the most. Well, then this would be my score so far. I'd only have about three. If the jungle, I did not uh, have the highest. I had a bunch of jungle cards. They're not going to do me a whole good. If I have at least one card out, but I did not win, I take my single lowest card of that uh, kind and I score that the rest of these cards do me no good if I did not have any card of that type I would not have scored anything yellow let's say I had the most with 12 I would get to score all of these yellows which is amazing so I would have won that let's say I actually won blue the Antarctica I would have get all the blue cards but I don't have any because I spent them all trying to win so I get no blue cards even though I won it everyone else that had a card down would get their lowest number card. And let's say the moon I did not win, I would take my single lowest card and put it there. And then these would be all my points and I would count these up and that would be my points at the end of the game. So that's how you score and how you're trying to get an area majority of the different zones. Let's talk about how a round works. At the beginning of the game, this is the back of those cards, each player takes two cards into their hand. These would be secret in your hand. That's just to begin the game. Now you start a round. At the beginning of every round, everyone is going to draw two cards. So in this case, at the beginning of the game, everyone's going to have four cards in their hand. These are secret from the other players. You are going to choose one card to pass to your neighbor to your left and one card to pass to your neighbor to your right. So let's say I pass this to the left guy, I put it face down. This one I pass to the guy to my right, I put it face down. I am also going to receive a card from my right player and from my left player. Now I have these, these are secretly in my hand, and I'm back to four cards again. Ooh, look what they passed me. Now, at the same time, everyone is going to put a card face down in front of them. So these would be in my hand. I would put this face down. Once everybody has put their cards face down, you reveal them so everybody can see what's happening. That's the end of a round. And at the beginning of the next round, so now I have three cards left. And at the beginning of the second round, I'll draw two cards. I'll do the same thing. I'll pass one to the left pass one to my right, I'll get one from the left player, I'll get one from the right player. But you'll notice that every round you're, you're playing, most of the time you're playing one card, and then you're drawing two. So at the beginning of the game you have four cards in your hand, but by the eighth round, which this game lasts exactly eight rounds, you'll end up having a lot more cards in your hand. Now again, every time somebody's playing a card, they're doing it face down, then they're flipping it up, and everybody's sort of keeping their cards face up so everybody can see not only how many cards, what the sum of everybody's different zones are and through the entire game, that's all open information. There's three special cards. The cards range from one 
to 9 in value. The three lowest cards of every suit or location has a special ability. The card number one, when I play this, it's the Twin Ninjas. Essentially what happens is the next turn, instead of throwing down one card face down, I'll actually get to select two cards to play, so I'll get an extra card out there. Number two is hilarious. When you play a number two card, it's a bomb. Every player that has that turn, uh, when we reveal what cards everyone played, played a 7 or above, a 7, 8, or 9, those cards all get blown up and discarded from the game. And number three is binoculars. It's sort of a, a spy, if you will. Next turn, everybody else, all the other players, are going to put their cards face down. They're all going to reveal in front of them. And then once you get to see what they've revealed, that's when you get to decide when to reveal. Those are the three special ability cards. That's it. Now you know how to play Zany Penguins. Well, I'm not ashamed to disclaim at the beginning of this review that Bruno Cathala is my favorite designer of all time. If you've watched my reviews, you probably know that already. And I like it when he works with other designers, especially ones like this where I believe this is his first published design, his co-designer here. Uh, so I'm always interested in what Bruno's coming out with, and I will say that not every game Bruno comes out with do I even like. There's been a few of them that I did not like that I've reviewed. There's been some that I'm like, it's good, but I'm not going to keep it. Uh, and then there's others that I love, and there's a lot of them that I love from him. This is a game that I love. I believe that this game should and would and could replace Sushi Go on everybody's collection. Uh, it fits that niche of a quick 20 minutes or less game that you can teach non-gamers but yet has a level of depth that's quite interesting has some awesome decision making let me tell you what i love most about this game the scoring mechanism last year i was really excited about a card game called arboretum this game made my top 10 of the year and would have made my card game of the year if it wasn't for baseball highlights 2045 the thing i loved about that mechanism is you play cards down on the board and then whoever has the most of certain things in their hand at the end score things and it was really interesting uh, things to think about is you're trying to put things on the board but you're trying to keep things this flips that on its head where actually you're trying to play a bunch of things down for area majority or area control down on the board so everybody can see it but if you win you only if you win do you get to spend and get all the points from the ones you held back so it's like you're trying to throw cards out but yet you're not trying to throw too many out because you need to keep them back because these are the only ones that score. And that decision making is amazing because you're fighting with other people about different zones, but you don't want to fight them too hard. You want to just barely beat them as little as possible to make sure you're first, but just barely so you have as many points as you want. I love the drafting in this game where it's, it's you're not drafting one and then passing stuff. You're like, you're drafting away from you. I don't want this, huh? What am I going to give this partner? You're looking at what they're working on. You're trying not to help them out too much. Maybe you're giving them stuff that will fight, make them fight against each other and stuff that you're not even going for. And then you're getting stuff and you're hoping that they give you something that, that, that you need. And a lot of times you'll have to get rid of cards that you really don't want to give them because... Hey, you can't get rid of anything else because you're holding them. You think you're going to win the Antarctic and you got a bunch of them in your hand. You don't want to get rid of those. Those are going to be points if you think you're going to win. So you got to give them stuff that might help them. Maybe they're fighting with you and something else. The decision making in this simple game is absolutely amazing. And the way that the scoring mechanism makes it just awesome. I love the special abilities where those lower cards, you can, you can give someone two high cards and then play a bomb card thinking they're going to play them right away and boom, blow them up and screw over your neighbor. This game is awesome. It's as easy to teach as Sushi Go. I just played this with a nine-year-old who doesn't play games, and with two other people that don't play games, they were able to get it right away. It took them one round to really wrap their head around the scoring, even though I'd explained it to them. But after one round, they were like, oh, I, I, let's just keep playing. We played it again and again and again. Non-gamers can play it just fine. Great introduction to an interesting twist on drafting and an awesome twist on scoring. And yet gamers love it too, because you're fighting. And I love the simultaneous action selection. You don't really know what they're going for. Huh? Me and him are kind of almost tied for jungle. Is he going to do that? Or is he going to fight this guy for desert over here? You're guessing what they're going to do. It's amazing. Probably one of the best fillers I've played in a long time. Love the scoring. Quick and easy. Oh, I am gushing. I love this game. Everybody should have this. And it might just replace Sushi Go for you. It has for me. And that is Zany Penguins. Now, I love this game so much. I'm obviously keeping it in my gaming library. So let's induct it into my gaming library with a saxophone serenade.
This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.